Hey guys. I wanted to make a video blog. It's been a while. Um, I'm probably going to have to upload this to YouTube and then add it to Facebook um, because I've been having some issues. I've made a couple other video blogs, um, but unfortunately they just wouldn't upload. Um, I don't know. I just, I felt really moved to make one today. You know, I used to make them all the time and for multiple reasons I stopped. Um, but today was the multiple sclerosis walk in San Antonio. And, you know, at first I wasn't going to register for this. Um, excuse me if I cry or, or whatever, but y'all know I like to share honestly on my feelings. Maybe not everyone understands that, but that's okay. Um... But at first I wasn't going to register, you know, I was just not going to do it. And, um, I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I talked to a few of my friends and some people weren't able to make it. Um, some people weren't interested. And then I had my beautiful core group, um, of some of my sisters and brothers, um, want to join me. And we decided because... They call me the fearless leader. Um, I've been called a shield maiden more times than I can even say um, for many years. Um, a warrior. And sometimes I fought against those, you know. But I realized they are part of my identity. And they wanted to join me. And I thought, you know what? Let's do this as shield maidens. I have my shield that my friend Bent made me. Um, the first year I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis um he made it for me as long as with well as um one of our friends gregor and another friend of mine and ben's john um gave him one of his old viking shields and we resurfaced it i didn't get a chance to finish it but we did do the black on it and Ben took the time and cut the shields to match mine so the girls would be exactly like mine and he made beautiful handles from a solid piece of wood and they're so lovely. Um, on there, um, on the handle, I etched the trocos, um, troll cross and it's a protection symbol and then I put the scripture on there, Psalms 3.3 3, um, and it talks about your shield go look it up even if you're not a believer in Christ it's okay just look it up Psalms 3 3 um, and I've been excited and um, I'm gonna try to get through this but um, I was so excited because the girls wanted to join me and I had some other very close friends um, that are out of town and two that were having health issues that couldn't be there but they were the first ones to send me love this morning so you were there um you know who you are you were there with me but um gosh um i made the apron dresses to go uh, to match my friend jan so we would all be the same and we each um, got these really lovely linen underdresses, the shimmy. And I made my beads and Sarah's beads. And while I was making all these, I was making them and I was just working, you know, like I usually do. Um, just getting through making these really awesome designs. And I came up with my shield design based off of, even though I know it's not real, in real in the sense of maybe it wasn't reality but shield maidens were real um there were two specifically that i know of personally um that were logged in actual history and brujilde and lagatha a log you know with ragnar and all of them um and my whole life um i've really felt like a shield maiden i've felt like a warrior because i had to fight through more things than anybody that I know, you know? And so I really wanted to do this and it was very important to me. And we got there this morning, my 
One of my friends, Sarah, came early and I did her makeup and I was really shaky today and I was very emotional, but I hid it because I wanted to keep it to myself because I was enjoying the moment of somebody wanting to be here with me. And when I showed up and I saw all their beautiful faces dressed up for me to support me, it, it almost made me cry. But I was like, I'm going to laugh and I'm going to be my silly Dawn. You know, I don't know if you guys recognize that or not, but most of the time when I'm um, acting super silly and talking mess, it's because I'm really emotional on the inside. And instead of crying, um, I choose to be silly and goofy and and cut up so I'm not crying all the time. You know, nobody wants to be around somebody that's always crying. Um, I hide my tears a lot from people. But when we drove up and I saw them standing there waiting with smiling faces, it just, my heart, you know, was so touched. And I saw one of our little ones standing there in her little dress. And it was probably one of the most beautiful things to know that these people could have chose to be somewhere else and many did but these people chose to be there for me today this event wasn't about um somebody's child and their you know their beautiful fights and it wasn't an event it wasn't a comic-con it was about me and it was about a disease that has literally changed my life um long story short for those who don't know, when I was first diagnosed in 2018, I was devastated. Um, unfortunately, I suffer um, from what they call trauma-based amnesia, and I lost almost three years of my life after Dave passed away. I have very few memories of 2016, probably less than a couple handfuls, not even that many. Um, 2017, the only thing I remember partially are, um, I was sexually assaulted in 2017. Um, I remember that. I remember that. Um, and I remember my son dying in my arms and then bringing him back. And I remember him being on vent, but I don't have any good memories from then. Um, they're very vague and most of the time the memories don't seem real because of the amnesia they're only partially existent in the beginning of 2018 I can't tell you that I have many memories and I look at photos and and I know that they happened and I know that those moments happened but I don't remember them I barely remember my wedding with Ben um but I very distinctly remember the moment that they told me I'm sorry to tell you, but you are diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and we're not sure about the prognosis. We need more testing. It was after I had collapsed in our front room. I remember that. My legs just gave out on me, and I couldn't stand. And we went and got the test done, and there were like 13 lesions on my brain. And all this damage that was already been happening and come to find out, I probably had had it for several years before, but I wasn't taking care of me. Um, I was worried about Dave and taking care of Dave and Gabriel, you know, from birth has been sick, but from 2015, it's been bad. He had a stroke and we all know those stories. You know, you've heard me talk about them. Um, but I remember thinking my life is over my poor kids just lost their dad and now this and I was so sick and those of you who've been around for a while you remember how sick I was I was in and out of the hospital and the drugs that they gave me made me sick and the two that they thought possibly might help but they didn't really know were so toxic causing cancer and brain infections and all these and I was not willing to take that chance you know and they sent me to the Mayo Clinic and we did the fundraiser and we had friends and supporters donate money so we could get to the Mayo Clinic only for them to confirm that it had progressed already I was diagnosed with relapse remitting and then they diagnosed me while I was at the, at the Mayo Clinic with primary progressive and then it ultimately, a couple years after that, I ended up being diagnosed with 
um, relapsing progressive and told that less than 5% of all the people in the world are diagnosed with that version. And that there is no cure. And there isn't real medicine that can help. And the one drug that did help me and could help me, the insurance company will not pay for. And it is $23,000 for a small vial the size of an insulin jar. I can't afford that. And this journey has been hard. When I was diagnosed, like I said, I have a lot of memory loss, but in the beginning, I had a lot of friends in my life. You know, I thought they were friends. In the beginning, I had a lot of people in my life that I thought were friends, and they slowly walked away from me. And I was so angry about that for so long. I, I couldn't understand how someone that you had been friends with for three plus years, you walked with them losing their husband to cancer. And you've walked with them fighting to try and save their child's life. And they're diagnosed with this and you walk away. I am no longer angry about that and I forgave them. I used to get very angry when people would be like, oh, so-and-so doesn't come around anymore. They're such a nice person. And you know what? Maybe they aren't who you think they are. <laughs> but I was so broken inside and I became so angry. Angry about the loss of Dave and angry why all that was happening and then angry that I had to be diagnosed with this. And then other diagnosis came along with that diagnosis of something called spastic paraplegia and polyneuropathy, neurogenic bladder. And it just seemed like no matter what I did, these diagnoses just kept coming. And I just kept thinking, why is this happening? And eventually I sought out counseling and I got some help with the anger and the complex grief because grieving, grieving doesn't only happen when you lose someone to death. Grieving can happen because you've lost your continuity. Grieving can happen because you were diagnosed with a life-changing condition. It can happen for multiple reasons and unfortunately I was getting that grief from multiple points and it just kept triggering and triggering and triggering all of this pain. You know, and I wondered for a really long time, is it me? Did, did they walk away because it's me? No, it's, and you know, it's not me. It's not me. I did not ask to be diagnosed. No one does. Not anybody with the sanity. I didn't ask for people to walk away from me. I didn't ask for these lonely, massively lonely feelings and feeling like I was the only one fighting this and why, why wasn't I getting more support? When I stopped looking at who left and why this and why that is when it changed for me. It's when I started fighting again and I decided for as long as I have breath in my lungs, I will fight this disease. There are very few people that see me on a daily, that talk to me on a daily, that know what really happens when you're fighting this condition. It is a neurological disease. It does damage to multiple points of your body. All these comorbidities, meaning co-diseases and co-conditions, wreak havoc on your body. Twice this week, I've almost fall. And as you all know, I have an upright walker that's like a cage that my body slides into. And on a flat, soft surface, I can kind of scoot with it around my house. And I was using that. And one time I was in my kitchen, which was two days ago. And randomly, my left leg just felt like it didn't exist anymore and I almost fell to the ground. And it caused all types of issues. And the other time was when I was transferring over to the toilet and I have like the little 
safety cage that's built around the toilet that has the handles and the little arms and all that to keep you safe. I almost fell trying to stand up. And I don't make video blogs about this journey like I did in the very beginning. And so many of those were anger. And so many of those or raw emotion, but I think it is absolutely vital when you are fighting something to not sit there and act like it does not exist. Because that is what's wrong. That is why I felt like my grief made people walk away from me. Because it was raw, you guys. It was, it hurt. It still hurts in a different way. Um, I could finally talk about Dave most days other than the special anniversaries without losing my mind. Um, I finally have packed most of his things away. I have a little shadow box on the wall with candles on it with lovely things of his in it. Um, I finally have forgiven the so-called people in my life that were friends that walked away. Um, I try really, really hard now not to focus on that, and I, I pray that God helps me and continues helping me see the ones that are here, like those beautiful faces that I saw today that didn't have to be there. And some of those people that were there today have gone through some very hard things recently, and yet they still chose to be there for me, for me, to help say in solidarity, we are with you. You are not alone in this fight. That means more to me than 25 people showing up. And my text message that I got from my friend this morning telling me that I was a strong woman and how much she loved me and that she was sorry she couldn't be there meant so much to me. Because I know why she can't be there, and it's a health reason, and I understand and respect that. But this disease sucks, you guys. It hurts physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I feel so defeated so much of days. Not only do I feel defeated, I still deal with the loneliness. I feel like I'm a burden, like I'm not valid, like I'm not important to people because what this disease has done to me, done to my body, <laughs> to say it's hard would be an understatement. And recently, um, I'm not going to get into details because I'm not ready to. But I've had another health issue come back that I dealt with once before. That landed me very, very sick. And I am going to have to deal with that again in the investigation side of it. And I will give you more information when that comes. Or maybe I won't, maybe I won't talk about it because I don't want to lose anybody else. So what if it is that thing again? And what if I have to go through what I had to go through before? I haven't decided whether I'm going to talk to anybody about it outside of my family. When that time comes, I'll decide. Because I don't want to lose anybody else in my life. Because it's too hard to be my friend. Or it's too hard to be my family member. Or you don't have time for me. Because you're busy or because you have your own things. And that's fine. That's fine. Just remember, emotions don't make you weak. If anything, they show the world in reality that it's okay to cry. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to feel. It's okay to feel broken. It doesn't make us weak. And I've learned that through some beautiful people in my life and also some counselors. Being angry is okay. Because I've called those times when I get angry and you guys see my posts. They're like this bubble 
and that is full of all of these knives and spikes and all this pain stuck inside of me and it is time and God rises it up out of me and lets it release out of me because he knows keeping that bubble inside there is going to hurt me because it did for years. And in order to be free from that and to have that broken part of me healed and bandaged and loved by God, I've got to let it out. i got to let it go. Just like when we forgive people, we don't forgive them for them. We forgive them for us. Because most of the time when people hurt us, use us, don't think about us, etc., they don't think about it and they go on with their life and they don't even let it bother them. And we are the ones, the ones who've been hurt, the ones who are hurt by it, whether they intentionally or non-intentionally did it, it still hurts us and your feeling for being hurt is valid. Don't ever let anybody invalidate that feeling. But it causes us the pain and us the scar and the brokenness and so we have to heal us so in order to release that we've got to forgive and we've got to move on this life is so incredibly hard and especially nowadays we need to be better for us you know because the things that we go through touch more people than we will ever know and you may be the only reason why somebody doesn't pick up that pill bottle and somebody doesn't choose to leave because it's too hard. You may say something in this, just the mere act of you smiling at them or sending them a meme or a smiley face or a text. Just that mere act of you letting them know that you are thinking about them may save their life because I can promise you that it did mine. Three separate times when I lost Dave three separate times somebody thinking about me and reaching out to me made me realize wait a second it is, I'm hurting but this is not the end I will heal you know and I want to let you guys know every single person that is still going to be able to see this that's been in my life that have chose to stay even when I'm not the most friendly and even when I'm crying or when I'm, I'm in pain. Thank you for staying. Thank you for caring enough to stay. Because this battle is hard. And there may be some more difficult moments coming soon. And I'm going to need you. Not only do I not want to do this alone, I can't do this alone. For so long, I've been the superhero, I've been the superpower, I've been the super strong, and I've taken on everybody's burdens, and I've taken on everybody's pain, and I've cared for everyone, and I've raised so many children, I've loved so many people, even when I am so broken, I still gave of that love because it's who I am. People ask me all the time, Dawn, how do you do that? It's because God gives me the grace to do that because he made me have a heart of love. Even though it's been broken more times than I can say. And people have used me more times than I can ever say. And they've just shoved me off like I've meant nothing to them. I still love. Because this world needs love. It needs love. And I talk often about being one of the daughters of thunder, you know, because... You know, Jesus did not choose the Pharisees or the Sadducees or anything like that to be his disciples. If you look, the people that followed him the closest, the ones that were there were murderers, were prostitutes, were people that had major anger issues and, and people who were tax collectors, which were one of the most vile people during that time. But those are the ones that he called his brothers and those are the ones that he called his beloved. And he taught these lessons to, to have them go out and to also teach other people and to reach because he knew that there are going to be people that are out there that are desperately going to need someone like that to reach out to them because they're people like them, like him, you know. And that's all I've ever wanted to be. All I've ever wanted to be was literally real. 
so you could see we are broken people but it doesn't mean we're not worthless if anything it makes us more beautiful because how much more of a testimony is it to live through so much pain and so much turmoil none of which you caused none of which you ask for but yet you still shine to me that's beautiful even though I don't see myself that way I have people tell me that all the time and I don't think myself that way <laughs> but it's clear that I'm used in that way and I'm thankful that even with everything that I've dealt with that God has chose to use me to love on broken peoples and the misfits of society the ones that are thrown away because they have a diagnosis or the ones that are not thought of I'm thankful to be one of those and whenever the time comes for me to leave this world the one thing I will know for sure is I lived my truth and I made a difference I made a difference even if I don't see it in the moments of pain and even though I feel sad and emotional and like I'm alone and nobody really cares I made a difference and it didn't have anything to do with money it didn't have anything to do with cars or big houses it had everything to do with love because if I love you I love you it is not a word to me my heart is in it so thank you thank you for listening this long and I really hope that you understand more of what I deal with and maybe why I have issues you know but what I hope more is that you know that you're loved and that even in your moments when you're most broken and you don't think anybody cares I promise you that I do I love you Thank you so much for loving me back because I feel your love.